Hello guys, welcome back to the channel, I hope you're doing well. Today we're going to take a look at a car that has actually a couple of people have mentioned in the comments said let's have a look at that car, but it's actually one of my not so great choices. This is another financial mistake video really, so um, yeah, should we have a look? So here is my 2005 Volvo V70 and this is the D5 all-wheel drive automatic so in my opinion should be quite a nice cool car really and it seems to be quite well specced uh, the D5 uh, is the 2.5 is it a five cylinder diesel engine I think it is I could be wrong as you know I'm the not car guy car guy really um, but I know they're a decent engine um, and people really rate them I paid a thousand pounds for this car plus fees at auction so it's about 1250 quid and it was rated as a grade four i don't think the body works too bad it's got a few little issues but uh namely the worst issue was that it had a massive crack in the screen so we got it back to the farm and just kind of driven it around it seemed okay and then we drove it over to bear motors and i had uh national windscreens come out put a new windscreen in it which was a cost about 180 quid i think so at this stage we're about 1400 quid in and then we've tried to sort of start about getting it a clean up and that sort of thing but driving around in the meantime i think i was running it to and from home because it's a perfect car for dogs uh chucking bash in the boot and notice there's a few issues with the automatic gearbox before we dive into that though just, let's just have a look around the outside of the car so jumping out straight away is that bumper once clip it oh, well fixed probably gonna pop out again like that look. so that would like want fitting it back a bit neater really a couple of scuffs on the yellow wheels but not too bad really good tire there's a ding under the wing mirror there which I'm sure you can see and then moving along the rest of this side of the car a bit of lack of peel on the roof trims a much better alloy wheel has got a scuff there but that would polish off uh, another really decent tire other than that looks nice doesn't it look nice when you've got a car like this a big estate car and it hasn't got privacy glass on it it's a bit of a classier look sometimes i think round the back um we've got our d5 all-wheel drive badges our parking sensors looks like it's had a bit of a biff there it's definitely had a biff on this corner there's a bit of a trim hanging off a few crunches broken paint see the ripple paint there so it's definitely had a wallop in that corner where it's reversed into something i think i don't think that's what's caused the droopy exhaust tip possibly my favorite part of this car i wonder if there's a hang, -em, hang uh, broken there actually i was thinking that was an aftermarket tip put on it but now i'm sat down and i can see the back box i think that's got a broken exhaust hanger so we may or may not look into that depends what the future holds for this car really um on this side alloy wheel looks good another good tire um I thought it might have looked a bit perish, but I think that's been run flat. You can kind of see where it's been worn off there. Uh, so that's been run flat at some point. This side's the worst side, really, but nothing major. It's just a few little marks that wouldn't polish out, sadly. These little parking dings all the way along. I wonder if they always parked in the same place. Probably a dentist. Here's dentist car park. Um, and it's been dinged. Uh, another, well, as always, passenger front wheel is always the worst one so we've got some curbing marks but luckily it doesn't stand out too bad this tire has been run flat as well I wonder why they've been running all the tires flat you see you know when the side wall of your tire has been worn off or is looking roughed up like this clearly it's been run flat and a bit of a scuff here and there um, light scratch on the bonnet yeah that's not going to polish out sadly And yeah that's about everything i guess there's a bit of a scuff on that front corner there so far from perfect but for a car of this age and mileage it's at 133,000 miles it's actually quite a straight tidy thing i think for for what it is for what we paid 1200 odd quid i forgot to mention that our wing mirror glass has fallen off or the, i think oh no it has fallen off so the, the front piece of glass has fallen off the backing um, so it would need another bit of glass on there um, 
yeah from the outside though this looks like good news you know a few little marks but most people won't mind that it's an estate car i always find they're really popular people want an estate car because they're practical they're useful and people use these as like a work van you've got absolutely tons of space in there if you fold the seats down let's have a quick look inside so here is our volvo key i imagine this is pretty common across most of their range remote central locking is working and inside we have got our cream leather interior with very comfortable seats which considering it's done 130 140 thousand miles it's in pretty good condition i'm just going to get this spider off me a minute we jumped so it would definitely benefit from a good clean out if you're going to try and make this as good as possible but not bad at all it's definitely looking dated it? look at all these switches in here obviously we've got cream carpets which is never the best for keeping things clean there's quite a few fag packet wrappers in here but i mean there is a slight smell of smoke in here but i wouldn't say it's too bad what's this it's the first time i've noticed that it's almost got like a speaker cut out in the headrest i actually have no idea what that is is that something to do with the parking sensors maybe that's interesting i'm gonna have to i'm gonna cut away now i'm gonna be in the office and i'm gonna google that and then we'll come back so I've done a quick check and Google tells me that it's for the built-in phone system. So if you've got a SIM card plugged in there, it hasn't got Bluetooth, that sort of thing, but you put a SIM card on the dashboard and it would cut the sound from the speakers and it would come out of your thing there. So it was like it's right by your ear. So it's not part of the sound system, which would have been quite cool, but it's for your hands-free system. So there we are. Looks fairly decent in the back. Considering this is a Volvo estate and could well have been, you know, a big family car, it's not in bad condition really. It would definitely benefit from a good valet, a good scrub up, but you know, it's not horrendous. We've got a dog guard up at the minute. Can't remember if I put that up myself, which I may have done, seeing as I was running the dog around. Cream boot carpet as well. What were they thinking? A uh, little storage tray, we've got another handle here. Yes, and we've got a spare wheel well, which doesn't seem to have anything, but we've got some mats and oh a dvd changer with a cd stuck on top of it hmm. i don't know if i'm gonna be able to get that out well mystery cd there I assume that's maybe our navigation i think the navigation does work in here so maybe that was an old navigation disc let's hop inside and find out one thing i can tell you in typical volvo style this does have exceptional air conditioning and it's a very warm day so I'm gonna crack the windows down let a little bit of heat out turn this radio off let's have a look at our dashboard instantly we've got park assist service required and then let's skip anti-skid temporarily off now we did scan this and I think it's for the steering angle or the squib in here um, I was hoping it would be like a wheel speed sensor or something like that uh, it still wouldn't be a huge issue to do that, and I kind of hope that this might have been the, the uh, cause of the gearbox issues, but we have done a few bits of testing, and I don't think that is it, sadly. So it's telling us we've got two messages. They are, those are our two messages. And as I say, we're on 133,312 miles. The engine sounds nice and good, and no smoke. So the engine is good. It's just this gearbox that we're having problems with. And when we get out on the road, hopefully it should be fairly obvious what's going on. Uh, I notice our sat-nav screen hasn't popped up this time. I wonder if that's because it's turned off. Okay, here we go. So I found this quite confusing the first time I got in this car. It says, observe all your traffic rules, blah, 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 all the safety stuff. Press enter to confirm your agreement, that you confirm that you're taking a risk and whatever. Oh. I searched this panel for ages. There's a million buttons here, including your telephone, which is its own separate panel. And I cannot find a single enter button. And then Dan drove it and told me that it's on top of the steering wheel up here. So let's press enter. Is that the correct? Oh no, it's, it's on top. And then there we are. Hopefully you can see that. It's on like a dark, dark mode, but it is there and we have our controls it's the first car i've really seen where all the controls are on the back of the steering wheel here rather than having any navigation controls here whatsoever it is entirely 
on this and people who've owned Volvos probably are aware of this but it's a bit new to me I think that's a bit bit of a weird option oh check this out just had a look in the glove box and it's not just on the steering wheel we also have a remote control which seems incredibly dangerous in today's world doesn't it you're not allowed to use your phone but if you wanted to sit here with a remote control flipping through settings let's see if we can change it bright dark colors there we are bright so hopefully that will show up a bit better now um yeah so you have a giant remote control as well uh in here as well is tons of service paperwork old mot's i think we've got all old mot's in there some rubbish here's our service book let's try and not give anyone's name away and we'll see how many service stamps we've got so for some reason they've started like halfway through the service book strange but we've got one at 18,036 oh another 18,000 so that's the two linked 53,000 45 53 okay so I'm jumping around I guess I'm probably not reading this correctly there's I don't know maybe it's is that no I don't know I don't know why it's this confusing 65 77 91 97 105 is that the last one or have they jumped around in the book again no that seems to be it fully serviced cam belt and water pump so it's had a cam belt and water pump in 2017 so only six years ago so that's good we've got one well these are two the same one two three four five six seven eight nine 10 in total service stamps. That may have been nine if I double counted one. I'm not quite sure. Uh, and then we have all of our original owner's manuals and whatever. It's actually not a bad bit of history to see. I'm starting to feel slightly guilty about what my plans for this car may be. Maybe we should uh, spend a little more bit more time trying to repair it I'm not quite sure maybe I'm gonna to have to sit down in the office at the end of this and run the figures again I was gonna run the figures and tell you how much money I'm gonna lose but uh, maybe I should try and fix it I don't know but yeah let's uh, let's pop the bonnet and see what things are like under there because it might be an absolute horror show you never know okay here we are so yeah, I'm fairly certain, certain looking at this now. And if I pop that off, is it a five cylinder? Yes, it is. I thought it was. There's our five injectors. So uh, excuse my ignorance. I'm sure there's people going to be saying, you should know this. You're a car salesman. You should know everything about every car. Well, just to break it to you, you don't actually need to know everything about everything in order to sell it. I think it's probably more important to be good at selling things uh, rather than what the thing is. So yeah, my knowledge is not always absolutely tippity top but i know enough to be dangerous looks reasonably okay let's check the oil from the dipstick okay so black but not too thick i guess we have just had it running for a minute or two for that reason i'm not going to check the coolant because that does feel quite warm it has a warm day out here so it might be hard to tell but it doesn't look too bad i guess there's nothing left to do but get this on the road and uh show you what's really wrong with it okay so uh yeah the biggest issue i've seemed to have found with this is the gearbox is very lazy to change gear sometimes when it does it misses the gear and it goes into a false neutral the revs fly up and then it changes gear or it's just changing gear really roughly same as it does if it hits a false neutral either time it's like walloping you into gear it really is pretty aggressive and it doesn't matter if you're going flat out with the car or if you're just gently accelerating but it seems to get worse as it's warming up so we're going to take it for a little cruise down to the land i've got to change your battery on a citroen c1 for sophie so she can try and get that sold so hopefully these issues will become apparent other things i should mention i suppose while we're here is obviously with the driver's side wing mirror glass gone it makes it slightly more awkward to drive. It's not really the end of the world until all of a sudden you realize, oh, well, I wanted to check over my shoulder there and I, I can't. So that's annoying. If you've got the steering turned 
more than a few degrees, you can feel that it's pulsating. So either the pump's giving way or a belt slipping or there's an issue with the rack or something. It's not bad, but if say you go around a roundabout, which we will do in a minute and you're holding a constant angle, then uh, you do notice it kind of pulsing and almost turning a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna go heavy right round the roundabout. Hopefully you can see that on the camera. It's just, just rocks. I've had this in other cars before. Obviously it's a fairly common thing. It's either the pump or the belt or something not quite working right. So that's something else we have to take into consideration when we're gonna end up back in the home office looking at figures and deciding what we're gonna do with this car. What I have forgot to mention is that we have attempted an oil, uh, a gearbox oil change on this. I say attempted, we have done. And we thought that might have solved it, but it just seems to be that it's not quite so apparent when the car's not so hot. When it's really warmed up, I seem to find it's just, it's actually quite scary to drive because it's suddenly, you'd just be driving along casually accelerating and all of a sudden it absolutely revs like hell. And you know any second it is gonna slam you into gear at those revs and it's gonna feel savage. Oh, well not too bad. It seemed like it probably should have shifted up a little bit sooner and it didn't. And then it kind of did a quick shift, but that's not really the extent of it. Let's try again. thought it would shift up but it didn't oh here we go there it was hitting a bit of a false neutral or taking its time changing between oh there's a nice little jolt in fact I don't know if I put this into manual mode I think it was even worse in manual sometimes you think oh, I'll put it in manual mode and see if that solves the issue you know perhaps you could drive it okay manually but now, one last try of course, it's just been perfect now, isn't it? Well, it's not perfect. It feels, still feels like a pretty rough auto, but it's certainly not doing what I've been explaining. So I think I'm gonna have to fix or swap this battery over quickly, and then we'll get back on the road back home, which is another four or five miles. And hopefully it will rear its ugly head then. I'll see you then. All right, that's the little Citroen C1 battery sorted out. And Sophie will be down here. Trying to get that sold later, which means I don't have to shut the gate. Which is a godsend, so I'm sick of that gate. Can't wait to get electric gates installed. So hopefully going back through the lanes here, this fault will rear its ugly head. Not because I want it to be there, but so that I can sort of demonstrate it to you and why uh, this is a bit of a pain in the ass, really. All right, let's try manual mode again. Oh, Jesus. Now that's what I'm talking about. So I'm glad it happened and I could show you because that's rough. In no way in good conscience could you sell that to anyone and have that happen to them. I feel a bit self-conscious now. People walking by, I don't want to change that. Yeah. Oh, God. Now hopefully that will show on camera. So what was that? Second to third. I wonder if that is our problem gear. So down to third. Down to second. So change is down nice and smoothly. I'm just two and a half thousand revs, three thousand revs gonna change up. So there we are. Gearbox definitely has issues. Um, we kind of did some research. I don't think it is to do, because I'm sure a lot of people say, oh, it's probably to do with the ABS uh, warning, which I did originally think that, but I'm not convinced now, not from the codes that we got, not from the research we've done. So it's just a case of costing this up. New gearbox, is it gonna be worth it? Is it actually gonna be economically viable or are we just better off? Sending this off to auction or something, just getting it out of our hair, swallowing a bit of a pill, losing some money, and uh, moving on to the next one, just getting rid of a headache. Um, I am gonna follow this. Oh, nice little one series coupe home. 
and that's a cool old truck as well and yeah i'll see you back home we'll talk numbers right so back home and i've actually done a bit of research and surprised myself to be honest i thought i'd have a quick look to see what the values of these things are doing and the first one i come across is 2700 quid which is probably more than i thought it would be worth um, and that's on pretty much the same miles we're on 135,000 for this one 133 for ours um, and the only other two I can find, one's 7,000 and one's 5,000, both just under 100,000 miles, uh, both automatics like mine, both look in a fairly similar condition. I mean, ours could do a bit of a titivating really, but that surprised me. I thought it was going to be around about maybe 2,000, maybe just over, you know, retail at, on a forecourt. So I might change my plans on this or I might just get your advice. Let me know what you think down below what my options are. So looking at the money, we paid £1,235.40 for the car, including fees, etc. It was our local BCA, so no cost really to collect it. Uh, we put a new windscreen on it, £180, and we've put some gearbox oil in which I can't remember exactly how much it was, but let's say 25 quid. So we are stood at £1,440.40. Now if I just wanted to get rid of it tomorrow, easily, I could send it to We Buy Any Car Trade and get 888 pounds for it which would leave me 552 pounds 40 in the hole on it um which obviously i don't want to do sometimes i'm willing to do that because you get enough winners you can afford a few losers uh just get rid of it get rid of the headache especially if it was going to be top value of 2000 2250 but as it stands these volvo v70s are obviously quite popular especially in a d5 so I think my two options are either try and sell it via eBay or something, 1500 quid with uh, a listed fault, just try and get my money back, clear it out, or do I invest in either a second-hand gearbox and fit it, or get the gearbox reconditioned? I think getting the gearbox reconditioned is going to be extremely expensive, but I have scoured eBay and found there are gearboxes ranging from 300 to 600 pounds, and obviously they are going to be part number dependent, and I don't know whether they need programming or anything like that, so I could end up, say, spending, let's say, another £1,000 to get it sorted. We're looking at £2,440. Let's say 2500 quid. we would be looking at. Then do I pitch it at three and a half, four, which would be cheaper than these other two that are around about the 100000 mark? Three and a half, I think it'd probably have to be, looking at it and maybe look at a thousand pound profit i don't know if it's worth the time and effort we do have a new mechanic starting in maybe a month's time but i don't want the car sitting around for another month to be looked at so a bit of a dilemma let me know what you think in the comments below because by the time this video goes out i probably won't have made a decision i'm not going to shoot out tomorrow and just get rid of it and throw money away maybe i can find a local garage or someone who can take it on because we are we are decked out with work at the moment. We just don't have the scope to do it, really. Um, maybe I can find a gearbox company that will take the gearbox out, recondition it, and do it all for me. Um, who knows? If you've had a Volvo V70, especially the D4, the 2.4, not 2.5, as I said earlier, um, and you've had this issue with the gearbox, let me know in the comments. Any advice is welcome. Um, yeah, I could be looking at a loss here, but hopefully we can turn it around and at least get our money back if not, we might better make a profit. So whatever happens, stick around, follow me on Instagram, uh, shifting underscore metal, and you'll probably see what happens. I'll post an update on there. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you are new here, please do subscribe. And if you're not, thank you for continuing to watch, and I'll see you next time.